Okay, this is a quick recap of the components and the parts that we have done before and the measurements that which needs to be taken. Now, this is the casing. This is the casing that we spoke about. This is the suction area and this is a discharge line. We said that this is a volute casing, not a diffuser. That means the radial load applied to the impeller and to the shaft is unbalanced. This is the inside here is the wearing ring, right? So this is the casing wearing ring. And in here we have the impeller. This is a closed type impeller. And this is the, this one over here is the wearing ring or impeller wearing ring. So this is the impeller wearing ring. These are the veins and then the shrouds. <coughs> And this is a complete, uh, uh, this is the, uh, uh, what do you call it, bearing housing. And then we have the stuffing box. This is the, the stuffing box with the parts that are going to be explained. Now, starting with the wearing ring, we said that we have four wearing rings, uh, two in the impeller, one in the casing, and the other one is in the stuffing box. This is the wearing ring of a stuffing box, right? The uh, impeller from back is going to be attached to the stuffing box, a wearing ring, right? And we said that the wearing ring, the function of wearing is to protect the casing and the impeller from damage. We can, they are changeable. They can be changed rather than changing the whole components. And the other side now, because this is, that is section, right? So the impeller is going to fit this way it's going to fit around this way so this is the back uh, wearing ring which is going to be attached to the uh, stuffing box now uh, in order to take uh, the measurements uh, which is in experiment number one we will have to take the inside diameter of the casing wearing ring and the outside diameter of the impeller wearing ring, as we have described uh, before. Okay, so the inside minus the outside over two to get the clearance of the wearing ring. The other calculation was, or it was for the uh, impeller wearing ring from back side to the stuffing box uh, wearing ring also. So the tools that we are going to be using is the Werner caliber, the inside micrometer, and the outside micrometer. These are the, the, the tools that we'll be using for. For more accurate reading, we'll be using, or we're supposed to use, the micrometer. For a simple reading, we can start with Werner caliber. I always recommend once you complete taking the readings for either the using the inside or outside micrometer to double check using a vernier caliber, just kind of double check. This is the stuffing box. It is the elements that holds the packing rings, packing, or we could call packing serum mechanical seal uh, to uh, the shaft and separate it from the other component. Uh, the components or the parts over here, we said that this part here is the uh, wearing ring uh, clear uh, wearing ring off the stuffing box in this side we have we have nuts we have packing gland these are the packing glands and they remember they are supposed to be tightened that they becomes like a smooth surface they are two part one over the other one and then we have packing rings or packing seal we said they can be made of different types of materials that they can be used for okay and then this is how does it look from inside this is the place where the packing and packing seal is supposed to be we have additional to that part to the, which is attached to stuffing box uh, which is the shaft sleeve shaft sleeve is the part which is going to protect as we said the shaft 
protect the shaft from weeding, which is going to be installed over here where the packing rings and packing seal are going to be, going to be over here in this area, right? So these, uh, the sleeve will protect the shaft from weeding and damage. Now, uh, these are the parts. I will show you the, the readings on how to take these uh, readings. Now, we said that in, in order to place or to uh, cut the leakage and overcome the, the leakage of the, uh, of the process, we said that we need to apply the packing rings or packing seal to protect it or leak proof the uh, system. And we said that we, in order to install them, these are the opening, this is the stagger angle, the cuts, that you, as you can see over here, we said they can be either 5 degrees angle or 45 degrees an angle. When we want to install them, we should not place the opening or the cut closer to each other. As I have shown you in the picture before, it can, it can be 90 degrees, 180, uh, 270, it's up to you. But the uh, opening or the cut should not be just like the same because when we compress or we pressurize by using the gland follower, if you pressurize this way, we will make sure that there, is, will be, there, there will be an opening over here. So in order to protect this one, we just need to, as I said, uh, first of all, use the right cutting angle, stagger angle, and the second thing is just to place them, uh, the, the cut away from each other uh, to, uh, to make it difficult for the fluids to escape. So in the way to take the inside uh, diameter of the wearing ring using the uh, inside micrometer, you just need to insert the inside micrometer and just rotate it and make sure that they are a little, there is a little friction between the micrometer and the uh, casing itself and by then you can take and much of the reading which is indicated in the videos that I have sent uh, earlier, okay? And, if, and I gave you some data before. To measure the outside diameter of uh, the impeller wearing ring, we can use uh, a vernier caliber in different places. For example, starting with this place, for example. And then I can take another reading on this place Third reading, just to double check, and then the readings uh, will be there for you. Uh, I, again, I have posted this information uh, to you during the class. We can use the vernier caliber again to measure the inside diameter. Okay, we can measure the inside diameter over here then we can note down the number another reading which is also important is to measure the outside diameter of the sleeve this is the sleeve we will take different readings from here from here from the middle and from the bottom we can different readings and we can write it down and apply the formula to get the number of packing rings and packing seal that must be installed inside. Third main reading is the depth. Using also the vernier caliber, we use a depth gauge to calculate the depth. Remember that the stick over here, or the pointer, should not go to this area inside, to the table. It should go to the seat over here. The seat which is around here this is the seat so the reading must be to the seat not to the table or to the desk so we just we need to make sure that it's standing properly and then we can take and measure the reading in order to reassemble the parts of the stuffing box again what we need to do is that first we need to install the packing rings, or as I said, the packing seal can be called. This is then just this is just to make it simple. Otherwise, I need to choose the right angle uh, for them. Anyway, uh, second thing is just I need to place the gland follower, as I said, 
it's so, so, supposed to be flat, just like that. Because what happens, some students, they just face it the other way, just like that. See, these two parts, if they put it, both of them at the top side, this is what happened. This is the shape. If you put both of them at the bottom, this is the shape again. So you need to place one up, one down. So they become this, just like this. And you place them into the stem. They are pressurizing the uh, packing seal, packing grease, and then we can just securely close this one and the other one. Okay. And in case that we have leakage, we can just tie this one more and more until the leakage stops. Uh, and if uh, the leakage is, is quite high and it cannot be controlled by, let's say, tightening more the, of, uh, the gland follower, then what we need to do is just we need to change the gland seal or gland follower. Remember that some applications will allow some of the leakage to act like a lubricant and cooling or coolant to the process. Uh, so some, some of these leakages might be acceptable or it seems to be acceptable even though the packing seal is supposed to seal proof the uh, system. Now if you want to reinstall the parts again, this is the bearing housing and this is the shaft. First thing I need to do is that I need to install the shaft sleeve. Once I install the shaft sleeve, I can insert the stuffing box inside, gently, simply this side now this is seated and it's rotating properly right and then i need to add the impeller the impeller has two sides the opening side or the section i and the back side of the impeller make sure that this one which is the section i is facing the section uh, gate of the casing so i need to place them okay this way till they are seated properly After that, I need to secure the impeller by tightening, tightening the, the nut. After tightening the nut, finally I will add the uh, casing to, the, uh, to these parts. Okay. So in here we have and the installed uh, impeller with the stuffing box and the housing. And in here we have the casing in which we need to install these parts together. Now this, uh, this component or this pump is made of, most of the parts are made of cast iron. So you need to take special care when dealing with them. Now this is the way that we are going to install them. Gently hold it, bring it very close. Just make sure that the parts and bolts are shown or the threads are showing shown in the other side now this is after installation that you need to secure them by their nuts and you need to tie it clockwise just to make sure that it is proper tight these are the bearing the bearings that we spoke about these are anti-friction bearings. We have number of bolts. We said that this one inside called an inner race. This one is an outer race. These are the bolts or rolling elements. And then we have something uh, close inside here that separates the spacer between the rolling uh, elements, which we call it as a cage to protect and hold the uh, rolling elements together and they, that they don't get entangled with each other. Now, uh, we have discussed uh, the number that each one carries. For example, this bearing number is 6306. We said that the first digit represents the uh, ball bearings, not the number of balls. Again, not the number of balls or rolling elements that you have inside. It represents the type of the bearing. Again, we have another ball bearing over here. It also starts with 6305. We said three stand for the load capacity, in which you can refer back to the catalog, uh, manufacturer catalog. The last two digits, for example, here we have 06, and then we have 
zero five. We said that if the numbers here start with zero 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 one zero two zero three, you have a standardized number. Zero one is ten millimeter. Zero two is twelve millimeter. Zero three is uh, zero two is uh, fifteen, and zero three is uh, 15, seventeen uh, millimeters. Right. This that is the size of an inside diameter. But in here we have zero. Six. So we said if you have a four plus the number that the two digits at the end, if it was four and plus, you need to multiply by five. For example, in here we have zero six. So zero six supposed to be multiplying. So six multiplied by five, it's thirty. And as you can see, the number of here it represent thirty exactly, right? Again, this is the other bearing, which is uh, 6305. So we know that it's a ball bearing. And when we consider taking the inside diameter, it's supposed to be 25, as you can see here in the video. Supposed to be 25, just like this. So this is how we take and measure the reading. Now, we said also the installation of these uh, bearings on the shaft are uh, three three systems we use either use the uh, extension this is the extension with hammer and hammer the bearing by using by pressing the inner race into the shaft using a hammer and the extension or uh, using the uh, press fit the manual press fit hydraulic or pneumatic or rack and pinion just like this We're using a press or lastly we said we can use the shrink fit with, in which we need to heat the uh, the bearings till they expand a little bit and then we insert them inside the shaft and then we leave them either for room temperature or using other cooling methods in order for the uh, heated material to shrink and uh, play, be placed on their right position. To remove it, we can use the bearing puller. This is a two jaw bearing puller, two jaw because it has two teeth, two jaws. You can just place them over here, then we can start tightening from the top and slowly, slowly, by using the wrench, we can just tighten it from the top, tighten it from this one, from this side. And what happens over here, it will remove the bearings. Then it can remove the bearings just like this. <laughs> 